All right, let's talk Wall Street. We're watching the markets right now, and as expected, because uh, futures trading was off quite a bit this morning, we've got the Dow right now off 133 points, S&P, NASDAQ also trading negative. Chatting with uh, Rob Black, our financial expert, to kind of figure out why. So, uh, well, what bubbled to the surface for you this morning? We have some overseas news, we have corporate earnings and corporate news back here in the States. What do you want to start off with? I think in Japan, the Bank of Japan was in the headlines. Yeah, I guess we go big picture okay. start. And Bank of Japan's in the news today in large part, their central banker, their country is basically okay. They're not going to continue to stimulate the economy by doing debt purchases. They say, okay, we've lowered the value of the yen. We've kind of done our job. We've seen some crazy inflation. We've seen the markets react. We're going to be patient. So basically inaction by their banking is leading to a global sell-off because we as a world are addicted to cheap money. And at some point in time, we've got to wean ourselves off of it. It's going to be a, a a, a shift from defensive cheap money ideas like utilities and telecom to more cyclical growth areas like technology, um, financial stocks, consumer discretionary. So the U.S. is probably like the best market in the world right now as far as our outlook goes. And here in the States, of course, are investors stepping back a little bit? Are they hesitant of waiting to see what the Fed does with its stimulus program? Is that kind of the general mood? or what do you, what's Since we vibe? put in the bottom a couple years ago, we were up 143%. And the leadership, like I was saying, has kind of been a defensive leadership. Mm. AT&T and Verizon, Merck's and Pfizer's, things that we know are going to be around for a long time that pay a big dividend that's beating what the Federal Reserve is giving us as far as Treasury rates go. The 10-year Treasury's made a big move from 1.6% to 2.25% this uh, maybe month, six weeks. And that cheap money, ultra-cheap money is gone, but it's still cheap money, James, and this market will find another leg up after we have a bit of a correction. All right, let's talk corporate news. We had the story this morning of uh, Lululemon, their CEO, stepping down. I was just looking, I guess their stock took a little bit of a hit as a result. Yeah, their CEO, Christine Day, one of the best CEOs of all time, really? stepping down. They had the sheer pants problem. They fixed the problem. And then a month later, she's fired. She's gone. She's not on the board. She's completely erased from the company. So we don't know what's going on at that point in time. Wall Street tends to shoot first. Why would you want to own a sexy, uh, high, multiple, high valuation company like Lululemon? We can own something that we feel a little more comfortable with, like a Nike. So Wall Street's shooting first this morning, and uh, Lululemon stock is dropping. All right, let's talk tech news as well. We've got Sprint, Nextel, Apple also in the news. Which one do you want to start with first? Uh, Sprint, Nextel is okay. getting a sweet deal from Bank of Japan SoftBank. That deal looks like it's going to go through. EchoStar is not going to get it. Ultimately, it's got about 21 days left until a major U.S. telecom is owned by a Japanese subsidiary. Interesting to watch. Apple's news yesterday at the developers conference, it was good news. It's pretty updates. They got the iRadio out, but they feel like they're playing catch up. Their design's about a year ahead of Samsung's. It's about a year ahead of Google's. So they're okay, but we're still looking. Now, at one point we were looking for the dividend three months ago. Then we're looking at the Soft, uh, the developers conference. Now we're looking for back to school, so it's a while before Apple has a, a major stimulus of new product out there. And before we let you go, I want to ask you real quick about Boeing. The headline, and I'll read it to you here, the yeah. headline that I saw this morning says, shares of the aircraft maker uh, slipped after the company trimmed its 20-year forecast for wide-body jets, yeah. even though it said it's single-aisle aircraft, th that's going to be just fine. But the 20-year forecast was enough to sour investors on and the 20-year forecast was actually pretty darn good. The numbers that they're looking at, let me see, I want to read this to get it right. 35,280 jets ordered 4.8 trillion over the next 20 years. This is a fine company. The stock's gotten ahead of itself. They had the engine recall or the uh, jet recall um, on the 787 Dreamliners. Good company, great outlook. Stock got a little ahead of itself. It's like you and I going out and doing a road race tomorrow. Uh, we start sprinting. We're eventually going to have to slow down and catch up for a breather. All right, very good. Rob, thank you very much. Sure full and complete analysis as always and we'll be visiting with him again coming up at 9 15 talking winners and losers so we'll yep. see you then good all right darry